In the winter of 1984, former Penguins PR man, the dearly departed Terry Schiffauer, stepped away from the broadcast booth so that he could spend more time with his son Todd, who was developing into a pretty good baseball player. Shifty, as we call him, had been Mike Lang's partner in the broadcast booth since the late 70s, and he was the first person to welcome Mike to our city in 1974. By all rights, Terry should be here presenting Mike for induction into the Hall of Fame, not me. But unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He passed away after a battle with cancer in 1997. So I would like to dedicate this portion of the ceremony to his memory and thank him for giving me the chance to work with Mike in the booth 17 years ago. People often ask me, what's it like to work with Mike Lang? You'd have to be there to believe it. Mike is competitive, he's passionate about his job in the game of hockey, and he's blessed with all the tools for greatness. His sayings are his trademark, but to really appreciate his talent, you have to listen to him call a game on the radio from beginning to end. He calls the game like he's weaving a tail. Mike Lang is dedicated. He never misses a morning skate, and he puts as much emphasis on informing as he does entertaining. He never desecrates the game. He only dignifies it, win or lose. It is a tribute to his devotion that he has missed only one game in 27 years as the voice of the Penguins. And I'm happy to say also that any Penguin game played from here on out will be called by Mike Lang on either TV or radio, and that's because he is the voice of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce for induction into the Penguins Hall of Fame the one and only Mike Lang. I wanted to add one thing on AT that Kevin uh, talked about, and that is another helper in that locker room, Frank Schooley, who actually brought AT into the fold with the Penguin family many years ago. He's a very special part of that Penguin locker room still, and our thanks to him. I would like to take this moment to thank the selection committee for the Penguin Hall of Fame. I think in all the years of the Penguins playing and winning their second Stanley Cup, Howard Baldwin, was an integral force in making that happen. Since that time, things have changed, but the one thing that Howard Baldwin did do is he established a Penguin Hall of Fame. And I think it's one of the greatest things and the greatest legacies that he left behind to this Penguin franchise. We will always have the opportunity to know about Penguin history. In 1974, I got it off an airplane on then Allegheny Airlines. I landed at Greater Pittsburgh International, they didn't have the runways that they do now, or they, not the runways, but the, the gates where you would come up, they would open, and you would be inside. You got off the plane, you walked down a stairwell, and you were on the tarmac. And that first day, I arrived early in the morning from an all-night flight from San Diego. And the first vivid thing that I remember so clearly was the smell of sulfur in the air. Many of you today don't know about that smell. <laughs> It was from the steel mills. And I said to myself, what have you gotten yourself into? But it was, a, it was a smell that was distinguishable to the city of Pittsburgh, and one that eventually went away, and one that I thought uh, would never disappear, but it has. I've been able in this city to, to experience some great things. Four Super Bowls with the Pittsburgh Steelers, including the first year I was here. One World Series in 1979, led by Chuck Tanner, who is as close a man to Bob Johnson as I have ever met. And two Stanley Cup championships for the city of Pittsburgh. And I myself have been so blessed to be a part of it all, as all of you have too. There's so many people to thank here tonight to the general managers, the owners, who have endured all my antics throughout the years, to the players past and present, who have all had a cherry spot in my heart, 
to the officials who work this game, a very integral part. And I've also met the greatest collection of people in professional sports in the game of hockey. To my working partners, including the late Jerry Schiffauer, Paul Staggerwald, who's become an accomplished broadcaster in his own right, Stan Saverin, Peter Taglinetti, Dave Hannon, Troy Loney, Phil Bork, and Bob Berry have all shared the booth with me, and I'm forever grateful for their help. And my current partner, Eddie, don't call me Ed Olchek, who's doing a great job. I thank all those gentlemen for really making my job so easy. We had the opportunity this past weekend to celebrate the Hall of Fame, the National Hockey League's Hall of Fame. And myself and Craig Patrick were blessed to be an integral part of that. To Kate, Craig Patrick, to me, who changed the heart of the Penguins and gave this team a direction. A direction that I think still exists today. He's respected by all in hockey. His richly deserved space in the Hall of Fame makes me very proud to be with him here tonight. And I also have to thank a special man who hails from Montreal. Without his contribution, hockey in Pittsburgh probably would not be here today. Mario Lemieux continues to amaze me even to this day. When we were at the Hall of Fame on Monday, it was Mario who orchestrated the team coming to the Hall of Fame dinner and celebrating Craig Patrick's induction. And at one moment during that celebration, we were both in the Great Hall, and I turned and caught his eye, and Mario looked at me and gave me that little wink, and then thumbs up as if to say, congratulations and thank you for everything. No, Mario, thank you for everything. I appreciate it. To the other members of the Penguins Hall of Fame, I must tell you that I am right now honored to be in your company. As you know, I like to have a little fun. And so I will tell you I'm going to give you folks five things to do tomorrow and all of you that are listening and, and viewing here tonight. These are the five things that you have to do during the week. Number one, somehow you have to get a hold of Arnold Slick and call Arnold Slick from Turtle Creek. When you're out on the town, the next time, you've got to buy Sam a drink and get his dog one, too. If you see a loose puppy running around anywhere in the city of Pittsburgh or Tri-State area, you've got to yell, get that dog off my lawn. And if you're in the mood, you've got to go hunt moose on a Harley. And if you see me in the next couple of days, you have to bring something special because you've got to scratch my back with a hacksaw. <laughs> to the fans of the Pittsburgh Penguins, when we travel around the country, we see so many that have left but have never lost their ties to this great city. I have to tell you, I really don't, but you know, this is a special city. You are very special people, the friendliest people in all of America. And to me, this is a very special moment that I have to share with all of you. I can't express my gratitude enough for all the loyalty that you have given me, and I only hope I've given some of that back to you. I'm hoping... I am hoping as I finish here today to be able to say to you many, many times, it's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. Thank you, everybody.